Hello drum lovers, this is Lee the Drum here at Carrier Towers, Carrier Drums. What is Lee the Shop? Stuck in a stinking evening in the middle of winter on the cliff top, got to do with bearding edges, and why is Lee the Spray at the workshop? So let's find out why in just a minute. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Right then, okay, bearing edges. That's the little things around the edge of your drum that allows the drum head to be seated properly on there. Really important thing, a bearing edge, believe it or not. So this is a bit of a disclaimer. I am not here to criticize or upset anybody that's really geeky or really into bearing edges. What I'm here to do is to give you a little bit of the truth about them. So, <clears throat> if you understand bearing edges, when you know more, you won't necessarily be so hang up about what you read or what you see and what you might think is important that actually isn't. So we're going to find out why and look at those two uh, other leads to find out what they've got to do with this. So first of all, bearing edges, as you said, very important to they allow the drum head to be pulled and seated over nicely on the drum, stopping wrinkles and so on to get a nice even tone. However, many uh, drum companies will say that they have a certain angle on their bearing edge or certain style. So some will come centre to centre, others will be more that shape, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees and so on. And what they'll say is that that can influence the attack, the sustain, the body you know, or the volume of the drum. So does it make a difference for 45 degree bearding edge, 30 degree bearding edge, 60 degree bearding edge, and so on. So what we're gonna do now, very quickly, jump across to the workshop, and we're gonna ask Lee the spray. Now remember, in fairness to Lee the spray, he alters and cleans and sorts out bearing edges every day of his life. He also sprays, um, cleans, cut shells, drills them. So he is with every manufacturer of drum out there altering and modifying their shells and revamping them and bringing these older drums back to life for an example or revamping new colours on there. So his work is top notch, in fairness, he is classed as the mad professor, and you'll see why, because he's got his bumblebee outfit on. Um, but anyway, you can see he has something to discuss, and I think it's worth a listen. And then we're gonna find out what the heck has that got to do with Lee the shop at the beach, on not the best day. So anyway, Lee the spray, give us your thoughts. Thanks Lee. So. Boys and girls, what I've got here is a few shells to show you an example of the reality of how much material is removed on a bearing edge, say from a 45 or a 60 degree angle. Okay, so I'll take you through the, the, the biggest drum that we have. This is a drum art snare drum. It's a staved snare drum, meaning it, it's like a, beer, like a beer barrel, you know, all the, the grains of wood are vertical, which you can see here. This is 25 millimeters thick on one inch. So that there is a 45, I'll just drop that snare off, that's a 45 degree slope on the bearing edge. If I was to change that to 30 degrees, to lift that up, I'll show you, that way, at its worst point, I'd increase by 10 millimeters. So you'd have 10 millimeters there down to zero. So it's not a lot of material, to be honest with you. Would that make a difference to the shell? Personally, I, I don't think that you would ever know. And the reason you wouldn't know is it's the drum head on the top and this little baby here, in which there are 10 of them, don't forget, per drum head for the reso and for the top, has such a big influence. How much you screw these down is where all the sound is coming from and whether you're using a big thick head or a, a thinner drum head. So the difference of that, sonically, I would say is absolutely minimal. We don't have toms this thick. We very rare do you have a snare drum this thick. This is a, what you would class as a beast. So it's a, a more of a rare drum. Most drums are just a fraction of the thickness of this. So we've got these three here, Yamaha. We're looking at, if I use my tool here, we're looking at Yamaha being, what's that, six mil thick. We're looking at Sona as an, as an example, as a shell. We're looking at six mil thick. And we're looking at this one here, which is a Tama shell. We're looking at uh, seven mil thick. So you've got 
The companies that are used, same as uh, Ludwig's, New Sonics, I think are 5.5 millimeters thick. You've got uh, Pearl Drum 6 again. So they're all within that 5.5 to 7 millimeters thick, mostly within that range, most drum shells, because that's the fastest, I suppose, to put out there. Now then, how much difference does change in the angle of a drum shell, which is 6 millimeters thick, from 45 degrees to either 60 or 30. Well, if I was to give you this little piece of sandpaper there, the difference of material lost is less than the thickness of that piece of paper. And that is not throughout, don't forget, because we are changing an angle from there to there. The only difference in the thickness is in the inner part there, right at the edge you may lose that much wood in thickness. And that goes from there to zero because you cut in from the top down to there. Now, if I was to change this bearing edge and cut half from the front and half from the back, the reality is it's the same amount of wood. So I'm either cutting two pieces like that or I'm cutting like that. But in reality of how much material is removed, it's the same thing. So half of a millimetre or less, look, is removed on that outer edge of that bearing edge. And it's lovely. It just needs to sit over and then it's cut at 45. I think this one is cut at 30 degrees. If I removed it to 45, as I said, it will actually be less than the thickness of that at its worst point. Can that influence the sound of the drum? For me, no. It's just so minuscule. It's such a small amount that is impossible to know. I'm going back to it, six of them on a small tom like this, top and bottom, 12 bolts to pull that drum head down, that's where it comes from. It's not from the bearing edge. So why is a bearing edge so important then? Because Lee earlier said the bearing edges are important. Well, of course they are, because once upon a time, drum shells were made skins were made to go over the top and they pulled them down and what tended to happen is that the the skin and the drum tended to be pretty much the same size so the inner part of the drum head that sits over and the drum shell itself were pretty much on par so when drummers would tighten it down what was happening is that they would it was scraping on the outside of the shell there and by scraping on it it would jam you couldn't sit it properly so it would lock and stick because we may have pulled this a little bit more than that side and therefore people started to look at the importance of getting a good seat for the drum head and that's all that really matters so what they did is they created a thing called a floating drum head and basically they made it slightly bigger just slightly so the whole thing could sit and flop around open up the steelwork as well so when you pull down on that the the ridge or the, the section of the drum head that needs the strength does not get entangled with the shell itself so it can come down safely and that's why you tend to find this little gap underneath so if the drum head is nice and flat and we often rub these down and sit them for people and then you clean the drum head uh, drum a bearing edge nicely there and there so it's just a nice even sitting position no muck no rubbish on there Again, in 60s, 70s, drums were being thrown out at such a rate of knots. They were painting the insides of the shells and half the time all the paint was up on the top. And yes, then if there's big lumps or there's dents or damage to the bearing head, it can cause wrinkles in the drum head, which is not good because it gives you a flappy sound. But if they are clean and they are flat and they are sanded neatly, the angle is not the critical thing, it's that it is a nice clean finish so that the drum head can be pulled down equally. And that is it. There is your science. So, I hope that helps. So back to Lee. See you later. I've got work to do. I've got to get on. Lee the shop, over to you. I have a cup of water with me. And that is the Bristol Channel. So if I grab this cup of water. And I throw it in there. Has that made that deeper? Well, scientifically, yes, but I don't think it makes much of a difference. So there you are. I've done my bit. Back to you in the studio. <laughs> Fair play to him. He looked blooming cold and wet. 
What a stormy day that is. What uh, Lee the Spray didn't mention, he, he, you know, he thought he'd leave that to me, is that it goes further than just the tension rods that he mentioned. It actually then goes on to, for an example, taping moon gels and all of that where we'll dampen down or open up the drum kit. How much you tension is massive. And then the other thing is, is the stick and the, and the arm, the forearm, the muscles that you use down your forearm to whack that stick against the drum head. Whether you rim shot in, whether you're in the centre, whether you play softly, whether you play loud. It's your attack on that drum. And then we go into these little babies called microphones. Goes into your interface. Then that goes into a door program if you're recording. And then that door program, changing EQs. They could just sweep EQs like there's no tomorrow. Compression, uh, gate in your drums, adding reverb to your drums, adding delays or echoes to your drums. All these things to make the drums sound uh, big and powerful is done within the computer or within the studio via the microphones. That bearing edge then is like the cup of water. It really is. So bearing edges are important providing they are clean, providing they are flat, but the angle of 45 to 30 degrees of a thickness of a sheet of paper is not that important. So the reason as well for giving you this information is to sort of free you up. The truth of the matter is, is not to worry too much what the manufacturers will say on the bearing edge angle. Worry more about your playing, about where you're playing, what sort of setup you want to play and how you approach the drum kit and learn to sort of tune and tweak the drums to get the best sound out of them. Worry more on that side of it and less, if you like, on the very, very technical stuff. Go and just have fun. Enjoy drums for what they are. Take care from the three Lees. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, please subscribe and whatever have you. And if you want to become a patron for more in-depth videos, please do and support us for what we are doing. Take care. Over and out. Thank you very much.